um, which that right. kind of uh, that, that that's this is kind of the open end question. I guess I, I'm interested in is 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 there is there a place for abstract language yes. in, in in the world? Because okay. because because I can't I can't I personally can't think of a, of 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 a place of abstract language because to me to use no. abstract language is like to if you're using something that's really abstract it means that you're technically conveying something that doesn't need to have a point right doesn't th doesn't that doesn't abstract language lend itself to that conclusion automatically uh does it need to have a point or, or I, I would say a point is the, the point refers to a circle in, a, in, a, in another space you know, or, or, or like it refers to a, a set of points in another space. You know what I mean? Not really. Like how? How? Because how? Uh, 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 a generalization, as you said, with love, it, you know, it means different things to different people. But it means it, it definitely doesn't mean, uh, or <laughs> very unlikely would it mean uh, to an individual? Oh, killing killing your enemies or something, <laughs> or <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, yeah, we'll show our enemies love. I think that was actually a slogan back in the day from like maybe okay, Vietnam okay, or something. Okay. okay, whatever. I'm sure you could find an example where <laughs> where that that could be. I think seen it's really it's, it's it's like context for using abstract is really really important. So like if you're talking about love and you're in the context of a war, then it's kind of m more obvious to the listener that this form of love involves violence or something like that. Uh, like death and, and, you know, giving the enemy bombs or whatever. Whereas if you were talking, you know, in a room with your girlfriend or your wife or something, then then using love is probably thought of more as like a, a, a nice thing. So I think abstracts, abstract concepts are, are, are useful, but they're only useful contextually. And if you're in kind of like an open-ended context, then it really opens the door up for whatever someone wants to interpret love as because then you get, you know, warriors in, like in a gymnasium or something. You get people who are at war or whatever. The context is open-ended. Um, then they're more likely to kind of have different ideas and, and attach different meanings to these abstract concepts. So the only like the only thing for me that I, I think you can use abstract com abstract concepts for is the conveying of some sort of blanket emotion or using irony. So if you use the word love and war, that's kind of ironic. Um, but if you if you need to describe to another human what you're feeling, feelings and emotion are already so abstract. So it's like, yeah, like my I love you is different from someone else's I love you. Um, so, so the only the only, and and there's no and 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 because that concept and and connection and 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 emotion is so abstract, I I physically don't think there's a concrete way to convey that. There, there's but, well, uh, my I love you and your I love you uh, may be different, but uh, there there is some point of intersection, right? Where where like this, this this some some it's in some way they our meanings meet, you know. In ter yeah, yeah. I, I guess in terms of I, it's kind of like saying I like my relationship with you, as yeah, as yeah, you it, being it's, another it's human being, thing. right? But like out out outside of like describing um, abstraction like that, is there is there a is is there any point or use for them? Yeah, I think so. I I I, I find it difficult to imagine how you could. <laughs> That like cat. like <laughs> <laughs> got, got, gotta adjust the the cat. <laughs> Your cat is meowing. Okay, it's my. I, I do it's, think. I was, I was gonna say it's. It's. We, I had to mic the cat up, um, because <laughs> the cat is the MVP of this podcast. Of course, of course, biggest fan. <laughs> it was auditioning for your place, Teo. If just so you know, we whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, I, I do think that there's a, an, another place for abstract language and, and the understanding of complex systems or, or, or like complex the, the, theoretical systems, I should say. Um, you know, like the, the entire field of mathematics, you kind of need 
kind of need abstract language to be able to talk about things in a in a uh, well I, actually i would say concrete way <laughs> but isn't isn't this the thing like with in in those in those contexts you have to define what those abstract concepts mean like whenever whenever i'm i i use some like theory or or like a word or something when i'm i'm writing um and and i consider it to be like an abstract concept right i flag it in my head as being something that not everyone might understand i then have to take uh, like an entire sentence or 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 time out of the the out of the flow of whatever I'm doing and then explain what I mean by this, right? And mm. so it becomes kind of a, a task to any abstract concepts. The the best way to be to convey your meaning is to be able to flag things that are abstract in 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 their meaning and then and then break those down into as as concrete of ideas as possible. And you kind of want to filter through all of your writing and make it so that especially in the context of like writing for science or, or math, I'm, yeah, I would assume um, you, you filter through until you're, you're understood by as many people as possible because you're not using abstract concepts. And when you are, you're properly defining those things. Right. Um, a, a good, a good rule that like, cause we're always, you guys are talking about university writing in my university writing course. Uh, one, one concept that he, taught i can't remember his name either i don't know why <laughs> he like wrote a book about uh something a gunslinger who knows but anyways uh one one concept that he really pushed hard was if if you're using a, a big word then then always try to find its simpler uh like other word like if you're if you're talking about love for example don't necessarily say love, and if you do, then then you have to define what you mean by love into more simpler and plainer terms, right? Like you have to say like, oh, I like, I platonically love you, you know, like not romantically. There's no sexual attachment because love ha typically has sexual connotations, and so there's a lot of implications in in how we use these words. So it's really important in especially scientific communication to be as as plainly spoken as possible and when you do use these concepts to just describe them i think right at least that's my understanding and, and impression of how it's best to be conveyed so it seems like there's like abstract language is is kind of a shortcut um or or it's a way of packing like a paragraph of simpler language that conveys meaning of, of an idea and uh, so, so so i in, in, going back to the being able to develop complex theories, it, it so certainly in mathematics it helps to not um, it, it helps to have the, the abstract language to to describe a complex system in, in one sentence, one sentence of abstract language rather than fifty pages of expanded mm -hmm. meaning. I want you to break down everything down to the axioms on every single equation you have. <laughs> Precisely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> theoretically, theoretically, you could do it, but yeah, astounding waste of time. So yeah, in, in, I guess in, in, in that context, abstract language is used as a convenience. Because I'm trying to think like in in, in a like in a day to day scenario, um, I, I I'm trying to think of where abstract language is used, and usually it's used by um, people to. Um, What's the, what's the word I want to use? Like construe, like fake and use it up? Not really. Just to convey, convey a meaning that is kind of transcending of just fact. Like they want to kind of, instead of just tell you, well, you know, today the sun rose. Okay, that's fine. But that doesn't kind of have any impact. And so what people typically would say is like, oh, today, like I watched the sun rise and it was beautiful or something like that. The idea of beauty is, a, is an abstract concept, right? It's, it's, it's completely at anyone's like, you know, the beauty's in the eye of the beholder. It's like the most common fucking phrase ever. If there's not a more abstract concept, it's the idea of beauty, right? And so some way that people will convey beauty is, is the, or, or a sunset is just 
yeah, like I watched it and it was beautiful. You don't necessarily know what they mean by beautiful, but you know what they mean by beautiful, right? It's abstract. Um, so it's, it's just a way that we can communicate and, and instead of just giving fact, which is really fucking boring to listen to, you can actually kind of give some emotion and, and, and then you build on a person's, you know, how they, how they respond to you emotionally, you know, they, you're, you're describing something that, that happened to you in more personal terms in, in ways that maybe they can kind of tune into what you mean by beautiful and maybe they can't. Sometimes you can be, uh, you know, misconstrued. Maybe you can be, uh, what is the word I'm fucking looking for? Yeah. Not taken like, like people can misconstrue what the fuck you're trying to say all the time. And so I think abstract concepts are tricky there, but if you're really trying to make people understand where you are kind of like emotionally as a person and understand one another, it's, those are really helpful ways to do it. 